Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Abbas of the Boss Coin YouTube channel and today I'm here to show you how to build an eight GPU mining rig for beginners. Every intro step is gonna be covered in today's video on the Boss Coin YouTube channel. So before you begin your build, you need to figure out what kind of builds you want. That's going to vary on the coins you want to mine. For example, whattomine.com has a good breakdown of what coins are profitable to mine at that moment. Or really what you should consider mining is if that coin is one of the top profitable coins, you know, relatively consistently to mine and you believe in that project. For example, I'm a big supporter of Zencash. I like to mine that even if it's not the most profitable coin to mine. If you find yourself always chasing the most profitable coin to mine, well, it's a lot of work and you may or may not get better results that way. So it's up to you. That's a decision you'll have to make. It's basically gonna come down to RX cards or Nvidia cards. If you check out the channel, I have a ton of Nvidia builds, like a ton. So check out all my builds on the channel, search a card, I probably have a build on it. And then as far as RX cards, that's on another story. It's gonna come down to your budget. Some of the best starter cards, just based off their price point and availability, would be the RX 560s and the Nvidia 1050 Ti's. So you're gonna to have to decide which one you want there. I like both. Today we're building the RX 560s. I ordered the 14 CU version, which is a compute unit, and the 16 CU would be the better card here. But you can typically find the 14 CU to be a little bit cheaper. So again, your mileage will vary and you're gonna to have to figure out what kind of cards you can even get in this current market and then base it off of that. So we're gonna be doing this. I've already BIOS modded these cards. I have a whole video about BIOS mining, if you're interested in BIOS mining your card, it's very easy, it's free, and my guide breaks it down real simple. I'm sure you can do it, and it'll increase the profitability of your mining rig. So I'll go over that a little bit more later. As far as parts, you know, let's build it from the ground up. You're gonna to wanna to pick some kind of frame, or you can do a hanging GPU build, which if you check out my best bang for buck mining rig build, that's what I did there, because it saves you the cost of this frame. However, today we're using the mining cave rig frame. I love these frames. They're arguably the nicest frames available. There's a little bit of a premium attached to them, but they also come with risers and all your necessary hardware you're gonna need. And this model even has an add to PSU built into it. That's pretty cool. And add to PSU, is lets you add another PSU. So if you need two power supplies, the power supplies of PSU, then you would utilize this. This would allow them to work harmoniously. So once this one power supply kicks on, it'll use this function to relay and kick on your second power supply and have your rig working properly, easy, and so forth. I'm gonna have a full parts list in the description below, as well as alternative options for some things. For example, a frame that you can buy just off of Amazon that'll give you good results, but this one you take it out of the box and it's already ready to go. It's a little bit easier, it's a little bit nicer, whatever. So you're gonna need your frame. You're gonna need a motherboard that can support as many GPUs as you want. Be careful on a motherboard. You can get yourself into a big headache here. I wouldn't recommend using a motherboard that a lot of people haven't shown can do exactly what you want to do. For example, the Asus Prime Z270P is going to easily run eight GPUs for us because, well, we've already done it and so have a lot of other people. For example, in our 1050 Ti mining rig build, this is the motherboard we used. You'll need to use an M2 PCIe adapter in that build, but we're gonna cover that a little bit later. As far as other parts, you're gonna need a CPU. We're using the G3930. This is a cost-effective PSU, and it's an 1151 socket, which is gonna fit on this motherboard and get us where we need to go. Again, we're gonna need GPUs, however many you want or can afford, and want to put in into this crypto crazy investment. If you wanted to just make this exact rig but only use four cards, you can totally do that. Simple as that, you can totally do that, so don't think you can't. If your frame doesn't come with risers, you're gonna need PCIe risers. We've had good results with Minso, link in the description. We need a power supply. We're gonna be using EVGA 850 watt platinum power supply. I'm a huge advocate of platinum power supplies. They're nicer power supplies overall, and they're gonna keep your energy bill down. You're also gonna need RAM and a hard drive. We're using Linux, specifically SMOS, Simple Monitor Operating System, and I have a whole video, actually two videos, setting that up and using that. You can check out my original one here, and that goes over a lot of the basics. Again, we're gonna need RAM. I'm using the Crucial Ballistics 2400. Okay, this RAM is one of the cheaper options out there. Looks good, it's been super effective in all my builds, and it's only four gigabytes, okay? When you're using Linux, you're gonna be fine with four gigabytes. If you wanna do a Windows build, which is not what we're doing today, we're, we're doing a Linux build, which don't be afraid, you know, Linux shouldn't be a daunting thing. Linux is more reliable and easy to use, in my opinion, than uh, Windows for you here. 
But anyway, four gigabyte for Linux, eight gigabytes for Windows. That's pretty much the consensus on that. You're also gonna want some random stuff like a screwdriver, scissors, zip ties, and probably a couple other parts I'm forgetting, but we'll cover them when we get there and need them. So one of the first steps is we're gonna need to install our CPU. Really, you should mount this motherboard on your actual frame first and then put this on there, assuming it's not too tight. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna drop this in here right now so you can see a little more clear without being uh, you know, harder to see with the vision on the frame there. So you're just gonna pop this off, just pop it right off, and then you're gonna line your CPU up. It's got ears on the top, which can only go in one way. Traditionally, or normally, the text on the motherboard, for example, I'm reading ASUS, you know, right here, just ASUS left to right, the text on your CPU is gonna read the same way. So you can see I'm reading G3930. It's oriented the same exact way. You're going to make sure you have this lined up properly. Don't force anything. And you're just gonna casually push down, be firm, deliberate, but don't force anything. And this is gonna pop right off and leave you with your CPU properly installed. Next up, you're gonna need your cooler fan. I'm, not, I'm only gonna show you what this looks like by pushing it here. I'm gonna put this on the motherboard frame and then push this down because you do need to use a little bit of force and I don't wanna mess that up and botch this whole build. Next up, we're gonna install our RAM. This is another easy, simple task. Check your manual to make sure you're installing your RAM in the correct slot. There's also a slot right there in the middle of the RAM that shows you, hey, line me up properly or you're gonna break me, buddy. Um, so make sure to line your little RAM up properly so you don't break your buddy. And looks like I can't even do that. And you can see I got it lined up properly. And you're just gonna push, you know, relatively simultaneously. I, I pushed you know left, right real quick. And you can see it goes right in, and now the RAM is properly installed. It'll click into place when you're properly seated. So very simple. We're using these pieces, they're pre-installed on this frame. They're called motherboard standoffs. They're as simple as it sounds like it, you stand off your motherboard on them. They screw in, we have supplied screws in this bag for mining cake. Screws right in, you know, don't force anything. I'm um, just using this magnetic drill bit. The thermal paste is pre-applied on the bottom, so make sure you don't mess this up. This is what bonds this fan with that uh, processor and allows it to suck that heat off. So there's four holes, I got them lined up and I have it in there. So, you know, alternating, you're gonna push down. You're gonna hear it click into place. And now it's in. You want to double check, you can pull these. This ensures it's properly bonded here and it's going to pull that heat off. So we're going to be powering this whole build with the EVGA 850 watt power supply, Platinum. And the, the cables we're going to be using is very, very simple, which is why this is such an awesome beginner build if this is one of your first rigs. Or if it's not, it's still a fun, easy build. So first cable up, a motherboard power supply cable. This is a 24 pin. It's going to plug into that giant 24 pin slot on your motherboard. Pin is synonymous with these uh, little holes here, these little connections. 24 pins will be 24 of these little connections. Um, next up, after you have your uh, motherboard 24 pin cable, you're gonna have a CPU eight pin cable. It's four plus four. So these go together, together and stick right into that CPU slot um, on the motherboard right over there. Again, very simple. There's really only one spot these things can go. So these cards are powered through the riser only. They don't have an additional PCIe power slot, which is normally found on top of the graphics card. If you have that, you know, you have to change down your wiring a little bit. You may need to power some of these risers with a SATA cable. And if you do that, never power more than two risers per one SATA cable from your power supply. But ideally, if you can use all your PCIe cables and not use any SATA cables in your mining rig build, you'd be a little bit better off. Next up, we have our PCIe cables. So a PCIe cable is a VGA cable. It's, that's what's gonna say on your actual, you know, cable right here. For this EVGA 50 watt, it comes with four um, PCIe cables, and two of them are six plus two pins, aka an eight pin that you can adjust to become a six pin, and then it has a plus six. We have four connections right here, so we can power four cards with these. And then we have two more PCIe cables. However, they're only a six plus two pin, or an eight pin, however you wanna look at it. And we're gonna to need to use an adapter. So there's a lot of adapters, I'll have them all linked in the description. But basically, you're gonna use this adapter and it's gonna give you an output of two six pins or two six plus two pins. And that's gonna allow you to power the rest of the cards entirely off your PCIe cables, which are a heavier duty cable rated to run a mining rig 24 seven. It's pretty simple, don't overcomplicate it. Just focus on what you need to know. Don't drown in all the information that's all on the interwebs. I try to keep it nice and simple here on the Voscoin channel. What's nice about this frame is it has uh, every power supply has mounting um, holes on the back, which you can normally use to mount into your, um, you know, ATX gaming computer builds, whatever. 
these can uh, these holes are going to be used to mount this onto the frame to give us a hardware mount to make this a nice secure rig that we could shake around if we wanted to but i don't really know why you would do that but if you did then you can do it or if you move or if you sell this and want to ship it whatever so it's very beneficial so when you're mounting a EVGA power supply here, all these holes look kind of like a honeycomb and then the actual mounting screw holes are gonna be rounded. And you'll notice they have a little bit more support around them. For example, right here and right here. So I've lined up these holes, I'm just gonna screw it right in. I'm gonna push with the power supply against me into the bracket and hopefully I'll make this look like I know what I'm doing. Just like that. I've already got one side in. Don't go, you know, too crazy tightening that side as you're gonna wanna make sure you get this side in before you really tighten it down. Then you just go ahead and tighten it up. Done, power supply is securely mounted to the mining rig. So this motherboard has six PCIe slots. So six PCIe risers are gonna be able to plug right into these slots. But we have eight carts, so what do we do? We're gonna need an M2 PCIe adapter. Simply put, you're just going to line this up um, with this M2 slot and you're just going to you know, be very careful. Not, you don't want to force anything in. And then you're just going to push it in. And now it's in. You're going to use the supplied screw to screw it down. And you want to have it essentially parallel with the motherboard. You don't want it to look lopsided like this. You want it to be essentially parallel. And we're going to do the same thing over here with this M2 slot with another M2 adapter. I'll have a link to these M2 adapters in the description. We use these in all our builds and simply put, they work great. These M2 adapters by Explomos come with a supplied screw as well as screwdriver with a slight magnetic tip, which makes it really useful if you do exactly what I just did. And okay, it's not gonna fix that problem. So you're just gonna line this up, screw it in. Again, you don't need to screw it in much. Make sure you keep a good connection. These can easily get moved out. Plugging in these cables is pretty freaking easy. Just keep some wire management in mind. And what I mean by that is just try not to make a giant bird's nest with your wires so that they can be clean and manageable. You hear it click in just like that and now our motherboard power cable is installed properly. Next up, we're gonna put our CPU cable in and you know, we're only gonna have one spot to correctly put that. So now we have that powered up, we're going to start installing the power to the USB risers. For this, it's really better to have the cards off. I just have the cards on for demonstration purposes. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can just maneuver under them. Normally your cards are gonna be much bigger in uh, other mining rig builds and they're gonna come out and make it very difficult to access this area. However, these RX 560s are pretty small, making them honestly a pleasure to work with. One other thing I really need to note is when you put these cards on here, you're gonna notice that your risers almost always have some kind of locking mechanism. So you line the card up properly, drop it in. There's only one way it can go. Just look at it you can figure it out. And you'll feel it slide in properly. And you can look at the side, make sure it's in there correctly. And then you'll be able to push these tabs, you know, whatever kind you have, and they will lock that card into place so I could hold this rig upside down and these cards would not come out. At this stage in your build, it's a great time to do some wire management. You can see I kept things relatively tidy and simple and led most of the wires right here and zip tied them to the frame. I zip tied one of the wires there because, well, it simply didn't reach. And then the holes on this eight car GPU frame are either a little bit off or the brackets on these cards are a little bit off. So using the screws up here ended up being just not worth the added pressure. It was just too much pressure on the card. So I used a zip tie, which is gonna allow me to have them secured here as well as here on the PCA riser and not be putting too much pressure on the card. So it's gonna give me a very secure frame I can move around and even ship if I wanted to. Next up, we're going to need to run the cable from the PCIe riser to the board. We're going to use this adapter, plugs right in. I mean, there's really only one way it can go in if you look at these grooves. And it's just going to plug in just like that. And then we're going to lead it over here and plug it into the USB riser. Installed. But we're going to do it a little bit cleaner than that so we have some nice wire management. 
plugging in these PCIe risers is as simple as it looks. I mean, you're literally just gonna plug it in. You wanna try to keep your wire semi-clean. I just did some really basic wire management. I mean, these three wires ran pretty linear. So I, th I threw a zip tie on there to just tidy them up a little bit. I used a zip tie over here to get these guys a little bit closer, trying to keep everything inside, you know, the frame. So a lot of these wires aren't outside the frame. I mean, granted, they're a little bit outside right here and right here, but these could be pulled in a little tighter if need be. Other than that, the M2 adapter on the board right here is gonna be what's gonna allow you to take this riser, the standard uh, cable length, all the way to the eighth card here at the end. Otherwise, this one, for example, would not reach the eighth card. It's a stretch to get it to the seventh card. Hey everyone, this is Tails. Uh, she's brought me her ball. Her favorite thing in this world to do is play ball, but we've been on strict doctor orders to basically just let her be. She's going through a lot of recuperation. If you follow the channel, you know, we've been uh, dealing with a lot of health issues with her, and it just sucks. But this is Tails Vosk, and this is her YouTube channel. I just work here. I want to give her a little screen time. Uh, say hi real quick before I put her back uh, over there on her bed. So, Tails Vosk. <laughs> All right, everyone, so you can see we have the rig up and running. What we have to do before we get to this step that's in between, well, right now, the last time you saw me was edit the BIOS. This is only for eight card builds, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing an eight card build for your first build. For example, if this is your first build and you wanna do this exact same build, but just with six cards, leave out the M2 adapters, and boom, you've got six card and you don't need to make any kind of modifications to the motherboard BIOS, but it's very easy. And here's a clip I shot showing you just how easy it is. All right, so we loaded straight into our BIOS. The easiest way to get in there is to just not have your USB hard drive installed. And then we're gonna come down here to advanced mode. That's F7. We're on our keyboard, smash an F7. We're gonna come over here to advanced. We're gonna go down to system agent configuration. And we are gonna go down here to VTD. We're gonna enable that. We're going to go above 4G. Oh, it's already that automatically enabled it. So we need to do that. Next up, make sure in graphics configuration you're on PCIe there. And then we're going to go to DMI. We're going to be on Gen 2. It was set on auto to begin with. Then you go down to PEG port config. And we're going to go Gen 2 there as well. I think it was on auto as well to begin with. Next, we're going to go back. And we're going to go down to onboard device configuration. And we're going to take the audio control that's going to be enabled. You want to disable it. And we're going to go down to M2 configuration. It's probably going to auto. You're going to set that to PCIe. Last thing, this is optional. You can come over here to APM config and go down to restore AC power loss. And you're going to go to power on. Basically, you get power, the rig's gonna power on, so it's gonna be like an auto reset. Next up, we're using SMOS. Again, I had this video about setting it up right into the hard drive. That was shown with the NVIDIA version. However, just grab the RX version off of their website, and you're gonna write it to a USB the exact same way. Then, once you get into your SMOS dashboard, you're gonna use these settings. This is a good baseline, and it's what I started with, 1100, 1850, 900 bump the fan speed up to like 60% or something, depending on your environment. For example, in my mining shed, the fans need to be a little bit higher because we experience hotter temperatures in there because we're using outside air to cool. But this is just in your freaking air conditioned house. You may not need to put the fan speeds up as much. With lower fan speeds, the rig is overall gonna be quieter. This is actually really quiet for a 60% fan speed. So, you know, shout out to these RX 560s for not being ridiculously loud especially since each card has two fans. But anyway, point is, is you're gonna need to adjust these a little bit to your scenario. So that was the baseline of the settings we used. Right, perfect. Then bumped up the memory to 2050. Didn't mess with the other settings too much, and that gave us this performance you can see here, which will be about 13.7 mega hash a second, which is very, very good. You probably are like, well, you know, I heard about these other RX 560s that did better. Yeah, but were they the 14 CU version? I'm gonna recap this. I mentioned it earlier, but this is imperative for the reasons that these cards are performing this well. These have been BIOS modded. It's a one-click BIOS mod. I'm telling you guys, it's so easy. I've got a quick video. I think it's only like five minutes on it. This is what it looks like, link in the description. But if you wanna build an RX rig, you've got a BIOS mod. Otherwise, you are honestly, literally, truly throwing money away. 
And that's not what I want you to do. That When you come to the Boscoin channel, I want to show you the best ways to get these tasks accomplished. I'm all about efficiency. I, try, I build my whole life around efficiency, and I'm sure as hell going to make a mining rig that is efficient. Speaking of efficiency, with these settings, this rig per the kilowatt on 120 volt standard US electric is pulling 590 watts. If you're wondering, that's very efficient as far as I'm concerned for this setup. We've got eight GPUs here pulling 590 watts pushing almost 110 mega hash a second that's pretty good i'm pretty happy with that absolutely i am and you know again we're using 850 watt power supply we really could have gotten away with a 750 watt power supply but you know with these kind of things you don't necessarily know going into it it's always better to have a bigger power supply and not use all of it than be stressing a smaller power supply where you could run into issues of it simply not working you're stressing those components too much you start to look a little bit more of a fire hazard again you know make the right decisions here don't ever cheap out on parts don't buy some stupid junk you know, $30 power supply is like, oh my God, I can't believe my house burned down. Yeah, uh, I can because you use crap components, okay? But I'm not here to lecture you. You do you and make your decisions in your life. Me, I'm gonna be using platinum and titanium power supplies. Um, you know, we use the gold here and there, but really, I'm all about Team Platinum, baby. As far as the price point, I'm gonna have links to everything in the description, I'm trying to find you guys the best prices. And, you know, it, it really depends. I don't want to like talk ROI, or break even point when these prices are all over the place. Uh, I mean, basically, in today's market, if you can get an RX 560 sub 200 and it's a four gigabyte version, you're probably doing probably doing a good job. Uh, otherwise, you know, get good parts as they become available. We'll see how everything shakes out over the next couple months with these new cards that are rumored to release. There's a rumor that Nvidia is gonna lock um, their cards out of mining in the BIOS. Is that possible? Is there gonna be some awesome crypto guy who fixes that and so we can unlock that BIOS? I don't know. Uh, times are just as crazy as ever here. So uh, with that said, make sure to subscribe to the Voscoin YouTube channel as we strive to stay up to date in crypto and everything that's wild in it. And let me know in the comments below what you liked about this video, what you didn't like if you think there's something i didn't cover that i should cover in my future videos and uh, definitely smash that like button i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching